Hello, Motivation Challengers. It is still Sunday. It is late in the afternoon, but it has been a marvelous Easter weekend. Good Friday was a day off for me from teaching and then had an unexpected uh, reach out from my oldest son about, can you take your grandson overnight on Saturday? And sure, I jumped right at that, not really thinking what could potentially be coming for my weekend. And so once I knew he was coming, I reached out to my mom. And I was like, hey, we've got a 24 hour chance with some time with my grandson. Can you come along and, and join us? And so she was right in there. And so she packed up quickly and came for the night as well. And so we had a wonderful grandma, great grandma Easter. So let me recap the X's for you because I have so much excitement to share with you and excitement, EX, right? But uh, remember last weekend, I really stretched it with my X's and putting E's before the X to try to come up with things to do. And really anything else on here, just, you know, it nothing really X related comes out. <laughs> I didn't do a whole lot with things that start with X. But did you find anything? Did you find anything to do? And you remembered the letter X. We are two letters away from being done with our first round of the 26 week motivation challenge using the alphabet. So we are going to start over again in three weeks. So I hope that you are along for the ride. I hope that you're sharing this with other people and encouraging others to join us in this. Let's grow this community because we can only be bigger and better if we have other people behind us encouraging us and motiva motivating us along. So I have big plans for this. This was our first round. There's going to be some upcoming announcements from me. And so I think really if you've hesitated about the motivation challenge and you haven't really hung in there with us, I encourage you to hang in there and see what's to come. So extreme excitement is coming. I'm going to put those words together. <laughs> so let's put X aside because we know that, that was a fail for me, except for trying to put E's in front of the X. I'll try better next round. Let's talk about why. Not only why am I doing this, but the letter Y. So yeast. So I feel that I have conquered making a cheesecake. So now it's like, what is the next thing? So I walk with my neighbor and she's the one that I was on the journey to perfect a cheesecake. Not perfect it, but to get better at it. So I said, I feel like we're there. What's the next thing? She goes, yeast bread. So that is what I think I'm going to be doing next. And look at this. This is from when my mom was younger and in 4-H. She had these recipes still on hand. And so she has loaned this to me. It gives you the basic yeast roll recipe. And then it expands from there of the different things that you can do with the yeast, you know, recipe, the yeast bread recipe. Let me get my words. <laughs> so the neighbor mentioned cinnamon rolls. So I think that is our ultimate goal. So the first step is going to be mastering the yeast bread recipe and then expanding on that. So this came from like an extension nutrition specialist. So extension, there's that EX once again. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below if you've got any favorite yeast bread recipes and maybe what you've done with it. So this is my next, you know, food baking journey. So that's why yeast is on there and then youth center. So I've alluded to the fact that I do teach. The thing that brought me into teaching was not a degree. I do not have a teaching degree. I have a business management and communication degree. However, I do teach. So what I teach is not the academics. I teach home ec, art, yearbook, which I've listed, and a huge college and career program. 
my college and career program is my project thesis that I had to write for my bachelor degree completion. When I started where I am, I was a volunteer home ec teacher. I volunteered one class period a day, every day of the school year. I saw in that teaching the lack of resources, the lack of curriculum, the lack of purpose for that home ec program at the school. So I took that idea with me to my adult degree program where I was working towards my bachelor's degree. And that was my focus of the two years. I ultimately had to give a presentation. I had to write out the project thesis. It's a huge paper, which is now bound and is actually in the college library. And it took broken down sewing machines and no curriculum to a full blown four year program that I have created. And so I am close to my heart. I am now an advocate. I have now advanced to the next level. So thank you, thank you to those of you that have supported me in my business. August will be my ninth year as a close to my heart, independent consultant, maker, and now advocate. So I appreciate you all because I wouldn't be there if it wasn't for those of you that purchase things from my website. So if I haven't thanked you enough from that standpoint, I really am appreciative. I would love to make it to 10 years and beyond, but I have a five year charm. I would love to receive the 10 year milestone gift from close to my heart. And I can't do it without you. I no longer want to be the one that supports my own business. So thank you. So with that, my downline has become an executive director for a youth center. And she, at one point, seven years ago, knew about my college and career program. And she says, someday I'm going to get my claws into you. Meaning this program that I have developed ties into her youth center that her church had developed and created. And now they have their own youth center. So on Tuesday, please be in prayerful thought for me. I'm going to go and meet with her in regards to the youth center and how I can become an active member. So this has been in my back pocket and some upcoming news. I won't be presenting anything new about what's going on in my plans until probably May, but I'm looking forward to kind of putting my foot in the door and helping with this youth center. Yearbook, another prayer request, if I can put it out to you all, is our yearbook has become a major job for me, not only as the advisor, but due to the current circumstances, the in-person and off-campus hybrid model is not getting the yearbook done. And so I have to be there for the 195 students that are looking for having a yearbook given to them. So it's, it's kept me up at night. I've had a four o'clock morning where it's like, this is ridiculous. I need to just get up and go work on it rather than tossing and turning here. So it's, it's been, it's been a challenge. And this is not for me to say that it's the student's fault. It's the circumstances. And how do you put together a yearbook? What is supposed to be memories of a year in school when they can't be together all the time? It's being creative and trying to step outside of the box and thinking from another perspective of how I can create something that's going to be memorable for these students. And it's got to get done. It's got to get turned in soon so we can get it published, right? So yeah, ooh, big, big heavy load. Yesterday, I talked about my lodgers, having my mom and my grandson come. It turned into such a wonderful, unexpected shenanigan happenstance of an Easter. We uh, ended up coloring Easter eggs last night. And then just the shenanigans that went on this morning to make it a memorable Easter for my grandson was so fantastic that I just, I'm still reeling with the, the love in my heart and the happiness and the joy. 
I will do layouts. I won't share the photos, but I will have upcoming scrapbook layouts where I'll start to share the story. I don't want to give it all away because it's fun to tell you the stories when I'm showing you the layouts and how I'm creating them. And I have some great ideas rolling around in my head about how I want to decorate the background to tell the story. So please, if you don't watch my scrapbooking layouts, maybe stay tuned to any of them that are going to be Easter related. <laughs> Yawning, that is going to be this afternoon into the early evening because of the joy and the fun that we've had for two days. It's so funny how a great grandma and a grandma can do everything and anything that a grandchild wants, but the after effects, you want to just sit down. I'm drinking another cup of coffee, but nighttime will not come fast enough. When it's time to go to bed, I will be so happy because I'm yawning and I'm tired, but it's a great tiredness. It's excitement and it's joy. So that's the best kind of tired, right? It's like we have fulfilled a journey for a child that I pray will be in his memory and last forever. And then yearning. I am yearning and, you know, looking so forward to being in my craft room and how well things are going that I can't wait to tell you about the plans I have coming up in May. So I just be in there, just hang in there. It's too soon. I don't want to share it yet, but I'm yearning for the day that I can just say, Hey, here's what's coming. And then you, that was my first thought when I thought about why is you, my big why is you. <laughs> so the W H Y is Y O U. Your comments, your likes, your subscribing, is so encouraging to me. Even if you're qui that quiet, you know, 98th subscriber on my channel, you're still here. You're lingering in the background. You may not know what to say or have anything to say, but your presence is enough. You are enough. And I thank you. So let me just take the why week and dedicate it to you. It's not about me that I'm here for. It helps me. It encourages me. It motivates me. But I'm here for you. Whether it's sharing with, with you my joys, my happiness, my woes, my frustrations, you're still here. The fact that you haven't unsubscribed keeps me going. I can't say that enough. Just seeing your number sitting there is encouraging to me. So it's you. You are my purpose. You are my reason. You are my joy and my encouragement. So I thank you. And I wish you the happiest Easter. The day is almost over. Your Easter might be over. But I pray that it was a good, blessed day. And you got to see or be with some of your loved ones. So happy Easter to you and your family from the Ferguson family. We all appreciate you because I know that my husband and my boys know what you mean to me and it's them and their love for me and the equipment that is set up in my, in my craft room that shows me that they are behind me 100% in what I do here for you. So thank you. May we all see some vast improvement in what COVID is doing for our lives and our inabilities to really be with our loved ones, it's got to get better, you guys. So I pray that you are out there and I pray that you are safe and healthy. And I look forward to seeing you back here again, hopefully tomorrow with Mother's Day Monday for another scrapbook layout. Yes, I took a couple days off from scrapbooking, but it's because of family and family has to be our number one, right? All right, you guys. Happy, happy Easter. Take care, and I'll see you next week for the letter Z. Bye.